Okay, I got asked to do a piriformis syndrome video. I promised I'd do one, so here it is. Now this is for people who've been diagnosed as piriformis syndrome. Not, I think I've got piriformis syndrome. I feel like I've got piriformis syndrome. I've read it, I've Googled it, and that's what I've got. This is actually a definitive diagnosis. And the difference is piriformis syndrome where you've got inflammation of that sciatic nerve either around the piriformis or when it splits the muscle and goes through the piriformis, usually has to be diagnosed on MRI. So if you've got that and it's not a disc bulge and sciatica, which can give you almost exactly the same symptoms, then this video is for you. So don't get confused that, oh, I've got piriformis syndrome just because I've got pain in my buttock or it's going down my leg a little bit and I've got burning, tingling, pins and needles. It could be an undiagnosed disc bulge or disc herniation giving you sciatica. And a lot of times we see people with buttock pain and they think, oh, it's piriformis syndrome. And they've gone for a scan and it's actually a disc bulge or even a disc herniation that's bad that's giving you sciatic problems. So don't get confused. I wouldn't run down the rabbit hole of just doing these because you've got bum pain. This is for people who've been diagnosed with that and then they're stuck. What do I do for relief? Well, this is what you do for relief for piriformis syndrome. So I've put together five things you can do. The first three are more like mobility work, okay? You're gonna work on things like a trigger point ball to release it, being very careful about releasing around that nerve, not on it, making sure that is pain relieving, not pain aggravating. Then we go through actually stretching the muscle, getting the correct piriformis stretch for you, not a glute stretch, making sure that stretch is perfect. And then we go into some more Cytic nerve work. Remember this cytic nerve is inflamed so we need to work on some mobility of that cytic nerve and we do it in rotation to help with that piriformis syndrome. Then we progress on to two things I really like to try and get the muscle released off by actually using it. This is not strengthening, this is activation work and we try and get that muscle release by doing things like a clam and especially one which is hip abduction inflection. I'll explain more in the video. See you then. First thing you want to do is get rid of some of that tension because that piriformis muscle has all tightened up because of the pain messaging going on. So what I would do first up, you've got to release some of that muscle tension. You've got to do it carefully because you don't want to create more pain in there that's negative that makes it worse. Using one of these is going to be helpful, but you've got to be careful with it. So what I want you to do is find out where that piriformis is. So you sort of go from the side of your SIJ, if you like, straight across your hip in a line like that, it's right in there. And you'll know where that is. But what I want you to try and find is just go to the point where you're starting to feel a bit of that tension. So don't just jump straight on and get in there because you're probably going to make it more sore. Actually have it sitting right beside you. So if that's the bony point, I'm going to grab your can of my hip. It's right behind it, okay? I'm not really sitting on it. I'm sitting on the ground. What you then can do is nudge over onto it until you get a little bit of that pressure on it. Now this can't cause more pain like I said, as in more bad pain. It can have good pain, which is like that relieving feeling you get. What you wanna aim for is then just move that hip out. So if you wash my knee, I'm moving my hip out, I'm moving my knee out, which brings my hip over onto it. Now I'm behind the gratitude trochanter and then there's heaps more pressure there. That still needs to be relieving. Once I've got that, then I can move down and back. You probably can't see too much what I've got going on because the ball's sort of sitting underneath my bum. But I'm getting right into just behind that gratitude channel on where that piriformis is. Now, as I get better with that, I can move and lift up on top of it. So if I push through my hands here, just take the pressure off the ball and then move across it. Now, what you have to do is hold yourself up at this point and then move through it. Because if you put your whole body weight on that, I'll guarantee it's probably gonna to be far too sore, especially if that's all inflamed down there. And you wanna have that relieving pressure and go right through that muscle. So I'm going towards my left, all right, for my left buttock, I'm going more and more left. So I'm going across that muscle until I get almost to the sort of SIJ joint in my pelvis and just find out where all that stiffness is and try and relieve that. And then I slowly come back, start again. So you're sort of going from the tendon part through the muscle part. And you're just trying to go up and down as you go across and almost think of like it's a physio getting their elbow in there and loosening it off. And keep it at a level that is relieving. Don't do it for too long, five minutes or so is enough. That gives you that sort of homework stuff, the stuff that we do in the clinic to try and release it off. 
and you can do that at home to try and buy your time before you next see the physio again. That's a really good one to do, keep it easy. Second thing, you've got to stretch that out because you want that tight muscle to be released a little more, you need some relief. So what I suggest you do is a piriformis stretch. Now that is not doing this. Don't go and do a glute stretch and thinking you're sorting it out. Your piriformis stretch is like this. So it starts on the left side, I want you to go, put that right leg straight, bring your left knee up, take it across, so if imagine with your, your right hand, if I'm going from my left, I want to go across in the direction, all you've got to think of, direction of my right shoulder. So my opposite shoulder, I want you to slowly pull that across like that until you get the stretch going from the back of here like this, okay, so where that piriformis is. So you're going into a deduction, because remember the piriformis does a bit of abduction, all right, but also does a bit of external rotation. So this muscle, you want to get in here and find out where that is. Some of you might find, if you've got tight hips, you might have to work on hip mobility, and maybe that's why you've got it, but you might get a pinch in the front. See if you can navigate around that and get it away from that pinch. So you're not getting the pinch in the front, you're just getting this, all right? Again, same rules, don't sit there in too much pain. You're just trying to stretch the muscle to drop down the tension a little bit. You're not trying to go into heaps and heaps of pain. It needs to be relieving or a stretch that then you find afterwards, then it's relieved. Just make sure you're not jamming the front of your hip there. So if you are getting a bit of hip pain through there, maybe you need to do work on hip mobility in external rotation, inflection to get some more range in here so you can actually find, you can actually stretch it out like that. And sort of the further over you go, you might add a little bit of rotation and once you get up there, then you may find, oh, okay, I've got rid of this and now I can really feel that and now I'm getting that released off, all right? So those are your sort of two go-to mobility ones, pretty easy stuff. But because that piriformis syndrome has got a neural component, meaning that cytic nerve is irritated and inflamed, trying to drop the tension by using doing flossing with that is even more helpful. Now what I suggest you do is you combine a little bit of the last stretch I did with the flossing. So instead of doing this where you either floss at the knee or you floss at the ankle, what I want you to do is do this in rotation over and onto a pole. So what that's going to do is put you on stretch. Just be careful that it might be too much here or too much down the leg. Remember that cytic nerve is inflamed so you may find that's really tensioned up when I go in this position. Some people are a little bit more mobile, they've got a bit more go there, but other people will have to have a really big bend in their knee to even do this, all right? So if you can get into that position, I've just sort of shuffled around my hips, that's taken a bit of tension off here, so maybe that's for you as you sort of get into a bit of rotation here so there's not too much. What I want to do is I want to try and straighten my knee that way, that'll bring tension on through here. Now what that's gonna do is drag the nerve through that section there. All right, so I'm sort of fixed down here. I'm bending here. It's going to start pulling it through and back. So I don't need to do too much of this. I want to just go pressure on. If all you feel is that, then you can just be guided by that and pressure off. If you go pressure on, extending your knee, going into dorsiflexion, and you feel it there, that's where you stop. Okay, don't go into this. Remember, this is like a type of a floss where we're sort of trying to drag through we back off, no symptoms, go to the symptoms, maybe it comes on here, maybe it comes on there, back off. You can't force this one, like with all flossing. And with this, try and think of you're dragging through dental floss through your teeth, we're trying to drag the sciatic nerve through the structures from your hip down to your leg. Just be careful, you don't cause any pins and dentals. You'll find 10 is enough, let it rest. You can always do the other side as a comparison, right? And then go back to that, maybe get your three sets done of that. So that's taking care of most of the early mobility work you need to do for the relief. There's not everything you do for these sort of problems, but it's a good place to start. Then you've got to work on, okay, that muscle, that piriformis muscle is probably weak. It's a bit pissed off, inflamed. What you can do is try and loosen it, get it moving via actually exercising it, but you can't load it up. So doing heavy squats and things like that, trying to go for your glutes is probably not gonna work. You need to do the low level stuff because hey, you're still in that sort of I'm sore phase, you wanna go for relief. So let's pretend the piriformis is on my right hand side so you can see. You go into two simple, easy movement patterns 
okay, that use the piriformis directly. Exgenerotation, okay, and abduction. So you're going to do two things for this. It's got to be unloaded, all right? So in this position here, I don't want a band on here because I'm trying not for strengthening. I'm just trying to get the muscle activated, get some sort of mobility through those tissues so I get relief. So think of the exercises as this is activation and relief. It's not strengthening per se, all right? So with your clam, always remember, this is a, what we call a 45 degree clam. So you're sort of in a position where you're not up here, okay? You're not totally in flexion. You wanna be down here. And then you wanna have those heels pushing together to give some brain to hip activation, all right? The more you squeeze your heels together, you'll find, ah, oh, actually I'm switching on here. Because if I don't use my heels and I just do this, I can actually do that and use the front of my hip, a bit of psoas, a bit of TFL, and my bum's not doing anything. So my performance is doing nothing if I don't focus on what's going on. So what I need to do is push through my heels, so this is, imagine this is my heels, push through my heels, okay, okay, right heel, left heel, push them together. So you've got a paper there and you're squashing it. Now to get my knee up, I want to think, I want to do external rotation of my hip because that's what that muscle's doing. So I want to externally rotate, squeeze those heels together, and like I'm clenching my butt cheeks together, all right, then my knee comes up, but my knee doesn't have to go too far. I can feel that deep down right in that piriformis, right? And then slowly down, again, everyone's different. So if you think, oh, that gives me pain, well, maybe don't go that high, okay? Don't squeeze as hard with the heels. Don't squeeze as hard with the buttock. But if you find that you can do this and go, that actually doesn't bring on my symptoms. I don't feel my nerve stuff there. Test drive it where you go, okay, squeeze quite hard with your buttock, squeeze quite hard with your heels, and then see what it's like afterwards as far as, has that calmed it down a little bit? Does it feel a little bit looser? Are your stretches better? When you walk, is your piriformis syndrome better, okay? So again, and test it with both sides. You know, get your 10 done, go to the other side, test that side, does that side feel okay? Um, and then you can compare where you're at with this. So I love this exercise for trying to relieve that off. So it's not just all about stretching, this actually makes you loose as well. Then your hip abduction is also key. So it does abduction, but it's in a flexed hip position. So there's no point you doing this for piriformis, that's gonna target your glute med more, all right? What I want you to aim for is into flexion. So go up into like 90 degrees of the hip. So you're, you're away from where you're doing your clamps, external rotation. We need to do abduction, okay? So it's away from the midline. So don't do that one. Again, it's a little bit more external rotation. What I want you to try to do, this is a bit of a specialty one. You're in 90 degrees flexion, then you lift the whole leg up and just keep it there, all right? This will give you a sort of a like, okay, I know where I need to go here. You're gonna pull away from the midline, both your knee and your foot, okay? So you can see here, I'm not doing external rotation, I'm doing abduction, all right? Whereas if I have my foot down, I'm actually rotating the joint, that's external rotation, my brain will use different muscles, you'll feel the difference between doing that and doing that, okay? You'll feel like, okay, that's definitely the back there where my performance is. So make sure, again, you are, if you're looking at your foot, you're doing it correctly. Your foot is in line with your knee. You shouldn't be able to see your foot either side of your knee if you're keeping it in line. And then you just abduct, which is away from the midline. Don't go too far. Don't rock your pelvis backwards. Keep your pelvis stacked over there. You'll be quite surprised. A bit of gravity. Let's say, oh yeah, I really don't need this band because gravity is cooking me up here already. And if you go nice and slow, you'll get that nice working through here again. Totally be careful. You don't want to inflame this, okay? This is the idea. The idea of this is to calm it down. If it's too inflamed, maybe you just work on small ranges to start with, all right? Then maybe this is too much. But if for those of you who can handle this, this is a really good way to segue into getting this whole thing calmed down and better and start improving your symptoms of your piriformis syndrome. So like I said, make sure if you're doing this based on you've been diagnosed with piriformis syndrome clinically, it's not something you've just guessed or Googled because you might be doing something that could be a way bigger problem and you're targeting the wrong thing, okay? You might be finding it's actually a lower back disc problem and you're not even doing lower back stuff. So make sure you, if you've got these sort of symptoms, get it diagnosed first, that is key. Then see if this helps you with the relief. See you next time.